Imagine it. Towering glass domes under an amber sky. Children playing on crimson soil. Greenhouses bursting with life where there was once only dust. The first human city on Mars. Vibrant, self-sustaining, thriving. For decades, we've dreamed of it. From sci-fi pages to Elon Musk's mind, Mars has been painted as humanity's second chance. A bold new frontier for a species on the edge. But what if this never happens? What if the rockets never leave? The cities never rise? And the red planet remains forever untouched by human hands? Mars is calling. But answering that call might cost more than we're willing to pay. So here's the question. Is the dream of Mars a glorious inevitability? Or is it a mirage in the distance slowly fading under the weight of reality? This is the Mars illusion. Why we might never go. After decades of dreaming, we're finally building the road to Mars. But we're not going straight there. NASA's strategy begins with the moon. Through the Artemis program, NASA plans to return humans to the lunar surface for the first time since Apollo. But Artemis isn't just about planting flags. It's a rehearsal for Mars. The moon will serve as a proving ground. There, astronauts will test technologies, practice building habitats, and learn how to survive off Earth for weeks or even months at a time. If we can live on the moon, we can start thinking seriously about Mars. The long-term goal? A sustained human presence on the moon by the 2030s. And then, a bold leap to the red planet. NASA's official roadmap envisions crewed Mars missions beginning sometime in the late 2030s or early 2040s. It's an ambitious vision, but one grounded in methodical planning. But if NASA is taking the scenic route, Elon Musk wants to hit warp speed. SpaceX a Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built, is designed from the ground up for one purpose, taking humans to Mars. Fully reusable, capable of hauling over 100 tons per launch, and fueled by Martian resources themselves. Starship isn't just a vehicle, it's a vision. Musk isn't just talking about exploration. He's talking about colonization. His goal? Build a self-sustaining city of one million people on Mars. A second home for humanity. A backup for civilization. Musk's timeline is famously aggressive. He once aimed for an uncrewed Starship mission to Mars by 2024, and a crewed one just a few years after. Those dates have slipped but development continues at a breakneck pace. Each test launch brings us one step closer. Whether it's NASA's methodical moon-first approach or SpaceX's bold leap, both paths seem to point toward the same destination. Humans walking on Mars, maybe within our lifetimes. It all sounds inevitable, but before we get too starry-eyed, there's a problem. In fact, several. Radiation. On Earth, we're wrapped in an invisible shield. Our magnetic field and thick atmosphere deflect most of the radiation that the sun hurls our way. But in space and on Mars, there's no such protection. Mars has no global magnetic field. Its atmosphere is paper thin. That means astronauts heading there will be exposed to constant streams of galactic cosmic rays and sudden solar particle events. Radiation doesn't just increase cancer risk. It can damage brain cells, impair cognition, and even compromise immune function. A round-trip mission could expose crew members to radiation levels exceeding lifetime safe limits. A major solar storm during transit could be deadly. We have ideas like burying habitats under Martian soil or building artificial magnetic shields, but they're still theoretical. Until then, astronauts remain vulnerable to a silent, invisible killer. Biological risk. Zero gravity doesn't just float the body, it weakens it. In microgravity, bones lose mass. Muscles atrophy. Even with daily workouts, astronauts on long missions return to Earth with bodies that have deteriorated. But Mars isn't just a quick hop. It's months in zero-g and then low gravity for years. Eyesight changes are common, caused by fluid pressure on the optic nerve. Some vision problems from space never fully reverse. The immune system also changes in space. Crew members can become more susceptible to infection. Healing slows down. Stress increases. Now imagine arriving on a harsh alien world with a weakened body, blurry vision, and fragile bones. Psychology. The journey to Mars is not just physical. It's deeply psychological. Astronauts will spend up to three years in isolation. The same small group of people. 
No green trees. No oceans. No real-time communication. A message from home takes 20 minutes to arrive. Another 20 to reply. There's no support network. No direct help in a crisis. Every decision must be made independently. Even small interpersonal issues can grow into mental health risks in that kind of environment. Simulated missions on Earth, like HICs in Hawaii or Mars 500 in Russia, have shown that isolation can lead to depression, anxiety, and even conflict among trained, disciplined teams. Humans aren't built for long-term loneliness on a dead world. Life support. We like to imagine astronauts growing food in domed greenhouses, turning red dust into fertile farms. But the reality is sobering. Martian soil is laced with perchlorates, salts that are toxic to humans. It's dry, dusty, and lacks the nutrients crops need. Water exists, but it's buried underground and likely contaminated with those same toxic salts. Extracting and purifying it is no small task. There's no rain, no insects, no topsoil. Everything has to be controlled with extreme precision. Any system failure, water pump, oxygen generator power loss could be fatal. Living off the land sounds poetic, but on Mars, the land offers nothing freely. Tech gaps, SpaceX's Starship may one day carry humans to Mars, but it has never flown to orbit with people aboard, let alone landed on another planet. Mars is a whole different beast. The gravity-thin atmosphere and heavy payloads make landing incredibly difficult. No spacecraft as large as Starship has ever attempted such a feat. Even if it lands, it must also launch back into orbit on a world with no infrastructure, no fuel stations, no margin for error, until we prove we can land and relaunch from Mars. Every plan remains speculative. The tech is promising, but deeply untested. Funding and politics. Mars missions won't be funded in a single year. They'll span decades, presidents, policies, recessions, wars. Billions will be needed every year for years on end. And space exploration isn't immune to politics. One administration's promise is another's cancellation. We saw it with Apollo's sudden end, with Bush's constellation program, and countless Mars roadmaps that vanished with a change in leadership. Public excitement comes and goes. Political will can fade overnight, without consistent commitment across generations. Even the most detailed Mars plan can crumble before liftoff. Mars colonization isn't just expensive, it's colossal. Experts estimate a fully realized human presence on Mars habitats, life support, launch systems, fuel production, could cost trillions over the course of decades. Not millions, not billions, trillions. In a world where children lack clean water, where our climate teeters on the brink, where poverty and inequality persist, is this the best use of our treasure? Even getting there leaves a footprint. Every rocket launch burns massive fuel. To colonize Mars would require thousands. The carbon emissions alone could rival entire nations. What will it cost our planet to escape it? And once we arrive, who owns it? Who decides the rules? Mars doesn't belong to any country. Yet companies and nations are already eyeing tree sources. Will Mars be a new chapter in human cooperation or a cosmic land grab? Before we build the first home on Mars, we'll need to answer the oldest human question. Who gets to call it theirs? Because maybe the bigger question isn't can we afford to go? But can we afford not to ask why we're going in the first place? The challenges are immense. But humanity has never been one to back down from the impossible. Across the globe, scientists and engineers are racing to turn the dream of Mars into a reality. One breakthrough at a time. Take radiation, for example. Mars offers no natural protection from space radiation, but solutions are on the table. One is to build habitats beneath the surface, shielded by meters of Martian soil or regolith, which acts like a natural bunker. Others envision artificial magnetic fields to mimic Earth's shield, deflecting deadly particles before they ever touch the surface. To protect the human body itself, researchers are exploring the frontiers of biotechnology. Could we edit genes to resist radiation, develop pharmaceuticals to slow bone loss or prevent vision damage in microgravity? These ideas remain experimental, but the groundwork is already being laid. 
And what if we didn't have to expose humans to danger at all? Advances in robotics and artificial intelligence are making it possible for machines to do the heavy lifting. Robots could scout sites, build shelters, even farm the first crops, allowing astronauts to arrive to something already built. It's the promise of preparation without presence. Then there's the question of cost. No one nation can afford Mars alone, but history shows what's possible when countries work together. The International Space Station, built by 15 nations, is proof that shared vision can overcome staggering expense. If Mars is our next great endeavor, it may only be achievable through global cooperation. Mars won't be conquered in one leap, but piece by piece, problem by problem. We are engineering a future where setting foot on the red planet might no longer be a fantasy, but a feat of collective human triumph. We often think the greatest obstacles to Mars are technical, rockets, radiation, life support, but there's a quieter, more human reason we may never go. Our attention span. We live in a world that changes at light speed. TikToks go viral in seconds. Elections happen every few years. But getting to Mars? That's a 30-year mission. Political cycles can't hold that vision. Public interest waivers. And funding for long-term space programs? It gets cut, reshuffled, or quietly shelved the moment priority shift. Mars doesn't just require rockets. It demands relentless commitment across decades. But our civilization struggles with long attention spans. Missions are announced with fanfare, then forgotten once the spotlight fades. And what happens when something goes wrong? One tragic accident could halt everything. We've seen it before. The loss of two shuttle crews reshaped American spaceflight for decades. A crew lost en route to Mars? It could end the dream entirely. Not because we fail, but because the cost became too real. This is how ambition often dies, not with drama, but with silence. No announcement, no cancellation, just fading interest. A new priority, a different crisis, a culture too distracted, too divided, to follow through. In the end, the most dangerous obstacle to reaching Mars isn't distance or danger. It's our inability to stay focused long enough to finish the journey. Mars has always stood as a symbol, not just of exploration, but of hope, a second chance for humanity, a place to begin again. We dream of domed cities, greenhouses stretching across the red plains, rockets lifting off from a Martian launch pad, returning to Earth with stories no one has ever told. But dreams, no matter how beautiful, must wrestle with reality. Radiation, bone loss, psychological strain, trillions of dollars, decades of fragile political will. The red planet is not just distant in miles, it's distant in readiness, in resolve. We are caught in a strange moment, closer to Mars than ever, yet still so far away. So we ask, are we underestimating the challenge or overestimating our will? This is where the illusion ends and your voice begins. What do you think? Can humanity overcome these odds? Or is a Mars dream destined to fail?